Hickok 45. Guess what? Look at that baby. Finally got a Ruger SP-101 in 357 Magnum. Two and a quarter inch. The little tank gun you've been requesting so much. So, hey, think I can get this two liter from here? I'm gonna try. Let's hit that one. <laughs> Whoa, oh man. Yeah, I can hit that one good enough. <laughs> Did he fire five or did he fire four? <laughs> yeah, it's the SP-101 and I know that's five. And uh, I'm shooting 38 specials to start out with, give myself a break, okay? But this is the stainless tank tanker that uh, many of you are familiar with. It's been around a long time. Uh, gosh, when was it? Uh, 89, I think. Uh, these things came about kind of a counterpart to the GP100, its bigger brother, excuse me, bigger sister. Uh, don't forget the ladies, but it's a uh, it is a firearm that I have actually owned these before. I've had one or two of them uh, over my lifetime. One with a concealed hammer or a flush hammer, and uh, one with a hammer spur. I think I bought from a friend, and uh, I've let them all get away one way or another it's just pre-video days of course and uh but the things i guess i have a love-hate relationship with them they're just little tanks they're well made and if you're firing 357 magnums in a little revolver whew, boy uh, you don't want to go much smaller than this and if you've got some hot magnums in it because you need some weight the 357 magnum because they will hurt your hand even in a mid-size gun and this is pretty small okay uh, let's go ahead and do it though all right let's put some magnums in this thing i tend to shoot mostly 38s in these little guns obviously for obvious reasons it's no fun to shoot magnums for me maybe you but not me and i'm pretty uh good about recoil i don't mind recoil i'm not recoil sensitive i think most of you know that but uh it's just not as much fun but now, if you want a small package that's really got some punch, uh, this might be the ticket for you. Many of you, it is. Somebody has bought <laughs> however many tens of thousands of these things. I don't know, maybe millions of them. I don't know how many they've sold. Well, since we've got a Magnum, let's shoot something that will uh, enjoy getting magnumized. How about that uh, jug there? Or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Takes care of that. How about that uh, cowboy? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, guy, right in the nose. That was mean. How about the tombstone? Oh, yeah. Puts it up there a little higher for you. Ooh, I think I have another one left. Let's see if we can get that two liter right there. Takes care of it. Takes care of it. You can feel it on your, it doesn't hurt. I'm not bleeding anywhere. You know, I don't mean to be a wimp, but it, it does, uh, does kick a little bit. Uh, it does vibrate you a little, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Woo, pretty hot, pretty hot. Uh, yeah, this is uh, about 89, it came out. This is available in the, uh, I think a four inch barrel, a uh, two and a quarter inch, which is what this one is. They come in various barrel lengths. They come in different calibers, 327 Federal Magnum, uh, 22, we've had a 22, I believe. And uh, what else, 38 Special, you know, this one of course will fire both, 38 Special and 357. But a uh, lot of variety, you check the Ruger website and you see all the choices and the, the prices. They run, I think, around 600 MSRP, 650, you know, you get them less than that. But uh, been around a while no big secrets but i had a lot of requests to to get a hold of one and uh so i'll give you my impressions of it ouch <laughs> I, it's not that bad not that bad uh we all know because all of you just watched the uh 80 year tribute right to the 357 magnum that the, the 357 magnum is a hot cartridge and extremely effective it's a very effective round and so 
it's kind of like the 45 ACP. You know, we argue about all these things and the caliber of religion that many of us uh, you know, are indoctrinated with and adhere to and all that sort of thing. We, we, many of us are zealous of some sort, right, in the caliber religion wars. <laughs> but there's no question the, the 45 ACP is a good cartridge, of course. May not be nearly as good as everybody thinks it is. Uh, it's, but it and the 357, not many people are going to badmouth them right they're just not going to because they uh, they really uh, do do a great job and 357 magnum is considered possibly the best of them all you know in a handgun cartridge i'm short of a 10 millimeter or uh, you know some of the big big magnums okay so but you have to ask yourself is this gun for you and uh that's up to you what you get with this gun the advantage of this gun this pistol this revolver is you get a lot of power in a small package. I don't know that that's really a good pocket gun. It's a little big and heavy for the pocket. Maybe, maybe if you got a great pocket holster, you could swing it. Uh, but it, it, you get, you get the weight. That's what you get that you really need for that cartridge. Uh, a person could shoot about anything in this, and you, you, even though I'm making a big deal out of the difference in a recoil. You can handle 357 Magnum in this gun. You can handle 38 plus P, you know, without any trouble. Okay, it's built like a tank, and it's got the weight, so you can actually handle it. Now, if you shot a 357 Magnum in a light little gun like this, 642 Smith or or this LCR, these things weigh almost nothing. And there are some firearms that are chambered in 357 Magnum. In fact, that LCR is right. Uh, boy, you you really have a handful. So you got the weight. Now, exactly the weight you have is this firearm weighs 25 ounces, okay? 25 versus 15 in this 642 Smith air weight. 15 versus 10, excuse me, 15 versus 25. I just gave the Kentuckians a clue there, didn't I? The answer, I was gonna see if you could kind of decipher the, the difference there between 25 and 15. So. Uh, some of you up there can still probably get the answer. 10 ounces heavier in this thing. Now, it doesn't sound like a lot, but 10 ounces in a uh, small pistol, quite a difference, all right? So, let's shoot some plus Ps. We shot 38 Special, the Federal, appreciate Federal, the uh, Brown Nose uh, 38s, kind of the classic 38s. I, mean, I shoot a lot of those, I like those. <laughs> if you're gonna shoot 38, they're fun. Now, if you're gonna carry 38s, you probably want a hollow point and a plus P if your firearm will handle plus P. I do think this one will handle plus P. No problem there. A lot of people carry a plus P 38 and uh, in the, even in their 357 Magnum revolvers if they carry them. I, I'm positive of that. I know I have done that and a lot of people do it. Not everybody. Okay, so that makes it more manageable uh, and a little more fun to shoot. Let's go on out to the gong. Uh, I think I have to hold a little bit low. There we go. Yeah, I wanted to hear the gong ring. Now that felt a little better. Let's put a couple on this paper target before he feels neglected. I think. I'm getting dirty here already. I think I have to hold a little bit under the... Yeah, there we go. Click. Yeah. Shoots a little bit high point of aim, which is okay. The windy it seems to be on. All right. Let's try a couple more of those. I like those. This is probably what I would carry unless I just felt the need for a magnum, big magnum. Okay, and this time. Uh, put a couple more on that. And how about a 12 ouncer down there? How about let's not shoot over the top of it again? <laughs> and do I have another one left? No. Okay. Yep. All right. These uh, positives and negatives, you know, the negative is, is the weight you're going to carry it. 
And as compared with those, now as compared with a GP100 or a Model 29, you know, it's not heavy, or a Red Hawk, of course. So it depends on what you're comparing it with. I guess uh, when you're comparing it with other guns, other revolvers, this small, uh, the, you know, carry guns, small carry guns, it, it, it does have a little heft to it. You know, 25 ounces is, is heavy for that category to be packing around. Now, on your belt, it's not a big problem. I've got this old Aurora Colster here. It fits in that fine, and you can carry it just like that. Not any trouble. You know, it'll do it. Five shots of Magnum. Okay, that's the advantage. Five shots of Magnum. Real Magnum. <laughs> pretty hot, pretty hot. And speaking of that, I guess I better fire a couple more Magnums so you don't start thinking I'm a wimp. Okay, holds five. Uh... There's no telling how many of you own this or have owned it. It's, uh, it's just been out there a good while. And it's, it's a very, very popular uh, revolver. You see lots of them in gun shops and gun shows. It's, it's a very well-liked revolver. Now, I will say, just like with me, there are a fair number of people who have bought them, liked them, shot them, carried them, and then at some point decided, eh, it's a little chunky, a little heavy for me. Okay? And we'll talk a little more about that after I break my fingers here. You know what? We got a couple of pots, so uh, let's see if we can get a little smoke out of them. Hey, I got a little smoke out of that one. I'll get a little closer to this one because I'll probably miss it. If I don't. <laughs> oh, man. Cowboy, I'm going to hit you hard again, guy. <laughs> That's That's some concussion out of that little barrel. I know it's hard for you folks at home. You're sitting there in front of the TV, you know, you got your cold beer, and I know it's hard for y'all to tell. But believe me, there's a lot of concussion coming out of that thing. Man, 357 Magnum. Ouch. Uh, but again, I'm not hurt. And again, if you're going to carry that as a defensive round, you just feel like it's important to have a hot round in there, really magnum round. Uh, so, so what if it hurts you a little bit? Not that it really does. Uh, the main thing is what? What's the most important thing? That you can shoot it well and that you won't flinch. And that you're not going to pull it out and... Oh no, it's got a nuclear explosion, you know, and you're going to pull way left, and after one shot, you know, you're just totally out of the game because the concussion has vibrated your brain and, and the muzzle's pointing to the clouds. You know, those are decisions that people who carry have to make. You know, when is uh, powerful too powerful? It's just some, uh, uh, you know, and we know all the arguments there, and then a lot of them are legitimate. You know, it's like 9mm versus 40, 9mm versus 45. All handgun bullets do kind of the same thing. There's not a whole lot of difference. You can get more 9s out accurately than 45s, but yet you've got a bigger 45 or a 40, and you know, which is better? And those, those are the things we argue about, don't we, in the shooting community, and we love to argue about it. Uh, so you've got kind of a similar situation here. You've got something really powerful if you can handle it, you know, if you can handle it. Uh, and feel comfortable about it. Okay, that's just my little lesson there, two cents worth. I personally, when I carry a small uh, firearm like this and a revolver, I carry plus P38. I feel like that will that will do whatever I need to. It's it's all on me. You know, you, you got to get some good shots off if, if you're carrying a defensive pistol. Cause they all just you know in a defensive situation, a handgun mainly is just going to make somebody leak. Okay, it's not the movies. I just feel better with with a good hot plus P round myself. Now, now while I'm talking about that, let me uh, again food for thought. Let, let's just do it. Uh, we haven't shot the coffin yet. Let me do a little uh, experiment. And I'm not sure what my results will be, to tell you the truth. But this firearm is about a hundred percent easier to carry. Okay, I know we're talking about the SP 101. I don't mean to dis dis it or bash it or anything. I like these little guns. That's why I've owned a couple of them. Uh, they're they're pretty cool. They really, they've got a feel to them in that small gun that that heft uh, And the, the power that it's capable of it, it's just a cool gun You know if you own one, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm, I'm trying to get practical here, too though Why don't we shoot five of these and and five from that same same round the plus P 38s let's just uh, kind of 
pretend here that we've had to produce this firearm and fire and empty it pretty quickly at Mr. Grizz or uh, whoever, Mr. Zombie, that's uh, trying to get us. Okay. I'm about to be killed for lack of shooting back. This dude's pulling out an Uzi. He's in process of getting around in battery and ready to go. Okay, so I've got to pull it out and uh, engage him. Okay. Hopefully that stopped him or slowed him down to the point where he didn't get more than 15 or 18 of those uh, nine millimeter rounds into me <laughs> from that Uzi. All right, so there we go. Let's try it with this. And it's again, 10 ounces lighter. It's something you have in your pocket and you don't even know you have it. You really forget it's there. And, uh, or on your belt for certain. So I think we'll fire it uh, double action like we did that. Think that'd be a good idea? We'll put it in the holster. Now I would, uh, yeah, that'd be one way to carry it. Okay. Uh, same thing. Uh, Mr. Bad Guy, zombie there. As an Uzi, no, he's got an AK now. He's about to get it into action. He's got his hand on the bolt, about to rack one in. So, you know, I don't know. I really wasn't trying for great hits or anything, but I think I got all five of them on him. Uh, yeah, so I would, I would probably still carry this over, over the Ruger because of the convenience. But, uh, and that's, I guess, my point. Now, I can't put magnums in this, and I wouldn't want to, anything that's small. Uh, so, my bottom line for me is, if I feel like I really want to carry a magnum, 357 magnum, full house, uh, that's the market for this gun. That's uh, the people that, that want this over those lighter firearms, LCR, or whatever else you want to name, okay? Unless... You just feel like with the weight, you're able to control it better. Could be that you just have difficulty with a light firearm. And with that firearm as light as it is, you'd have been throwing them up there into the gong instead of hitting Mr. Zombie there that's about to kill you. You know, if you feel like that's the case, then yeah, you're still better with this, with the 38 Special. Okay, because I actually had them in a better grouping there. I had a couple on the edge there with the, the lightweight, the airweight, lightweight, airweight. So, I don't know, there's some food for thought there it is a is a hefty gun a really cool gun uh, it will carry as well but it is a lot heavier so uh, if you just want something as light as you can uh, as concealable as possible something you don't you just almost forget you have you're going to carry 38 uh, plus p anyway you know just something to think about all right so let's shoot the thing again before we shut up here go away for dinner I know many of you are about to eat dinner, and uh, I am, believe it or not, coming to your house to have dinner with you. So uh, I just like to pick out some viewer randomly and show up for dinner. Hopefully you're not eating, uh, you know, fried possum or something, because I'm going to be there eating with you. Let's try that. Let's shoot that guy from here. Yeah. Yeah, they do just roll right out. It stays right, you know, on target because of the weight, so... Pretty nice, pretty nice gun. Uh, oh, you know what? I just about let that, uh, let's see, we got him with a Magnum. Let's get the man card out again. Let's finish up with Magnums. We have a two liter right there that almost survived the shoot. It has happened before, y'all have seen that, haven't <laughs> you? You know, when you're unedited, anything can happen, all right? Okay. Let's get this guy. <laughs> Magnums. Let's draw. Let's do a draw and get this guy. He's a zombie too. He's about to get me. All right. We have lots of zombies about to get me. And I have decided to carry Magnums. Whew. What's wrong with me? Well, I hit all the zombies somewhere. Uh, so there you go. If you want something hot like that, <laughs> it's possible to put them kind of where you need to because of, again, the weight and the heft of this thing. 
the uh, the Ruger SP 101 and uh, it's got a lock up right there in the front of the cylinder you know it's, it's made well so it can handle you know the that stiff recoil okay just practice with it if you think you're going to shoot one try to shoot one if you can all at all possible uh, you know have, have one at a rental range which I always recommend going to a nice rental range where you can rent guns that you're considering uh, shoot some magnums in it if that's what you think you're going to carry it's mighty easy to just look at a firearm on the case on the shelf there oh that's nice and it feels good oh I can shoot 357 magnum in it nice you need to shoot some 357 magnums out of one of these before you settle on that I think because you could go home and, and realize oh I'm just going to be shooting 38 special and then you might rethink and whoa well did I need this firearm you know maybe that one or one of those would have been better in LCR or something so don't know it's up to you a lot of good guns so many good choices out there uh, it's just amazing and we're really lucky to have all these choices even though it makes it difficult doesn't it uh, so this is one of them their choices life is good we'd like to thank one of our sponsors SDI the Sonoran Desert Institute SDI has fully accredited distance learning programs where you can get certified in gunsmithing or even an associate's degree in firearms technology. Of course, the study includes hands-on experience, which is important, of course. So check it out. Uh, go to sdi.edu or just click on the link in the description. Okay? And also, we'd like to remind you to check out the Hickok 45 Facebook page and the Hickok 45 and Sun channel and its Facebook page as well as Gun Culture Radio on iTunes. Now remember all this because I'm coming to your house randomly over the next year or two to give you a quiz on it, okay? Thank you.